Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror film, horror stories. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a female victim, lying on the floor with duct tape on her mouth and hands. Then, the victim wakes up from the noise coming from her kidnapper. She looks around the place, and sees random creepy things. Her eyes travel around the room, and then she stares at her kidnapper. The victim pleads in a frantic voice. However, the kidnapper remains calm, and then threatens her that he will kill her if she doesn't shut up her smelly mouth. Then, the kidnapper tells her that he will let her talk if she keeps her mouth shut. The victim agrees, so the kidnapper takes off the duct tape, and frees her hands. Then, the kidnapper writes that he needs to listen to scary stories, or else he'll need to taste blood to sleep. Even though confused by the creepy captor, the victim proceeds to tell her first scary story, entitled Don't Answer the Door. It starts with a young boy Moon, and his older sister Sunny, being dropped off at their houses by their teacher, as it's already night. While back home, Sunny and Moon watch TV as they wait for their mother, who is currently at work. After many hours, their mother finally calls, and informs them that a delivery man will come to their house to deliver a package. The mother instructs Sonny to tell the delivery man to leave the package at the door, as their father is still in the shower. Also, the mother reminds Sonny to make sure that the delivery man is gone, before she takes the package inside. Subsequently, the delivery man finally arrives, and Sonny does precisely what her mother instructed her. Sonny waits for a few seconds, before taking the package inside. After that, Sunny calls her mother, and informs her that she received the package. The mother asks if Sunny checked the lock, so Sunny returns to the door, and sees it slightly open. Sunny attempts to close the door, when suddenly, a man with scars on his face forcefully barges in, which causes Sunny to scream in horror. Sunny immediately takes Moon into a room, and locks the door as the man runs after them. However, they see the man's shadow coming outside, so Sunny and Moon leave the room, as the man breaks the window to get in. They run towards the door, but the man is suddenly there. So Sunny and Moon can only scream, as the man attacks them with a knife. Suddenly, Sunny wakes up, and realizes it is all just a nightmare. However, Sunny's imagination plays with her, and she sees a man pretending to be one of their plants. Even though scared, Sunny remains calm, and cautiously goes into a room with Moon. They hide in a closet, and attempt to call their mother, but fail. Suddenly, they hear the man's footsteps coming towards them, so Moon puts his hands on his mouth, while Sunny slowly looks in between the gap of the closet's door. Suddenly, a woman's eyes look directly into Sunny. But then, Moon sees something strange behind Sunny's back, so he turns on the cell phone, but a terrifying ghost of a woman horrifies them. Sunny and Moon go down screaming, but when they reach the ground floor, the door fails to open. Meanwhile, the ghost is coming down, so Sunny takes Moon into a room before the ghost catches them. The room is dark, but Moon and Sunny clearly see the ghost inside with them. Sunny hugs Moon tightly, as the ghost screams at them. The scene then flashes back to a man in a phone call. The man blames his sister's company for his sister's death. It turns out that the ghost with Sunny and Moon, is the man's sister who died because of a fire that happened in the company. The company owner cold-heartedly replies to the man, that she does not care about the death of her employees, as the employees are bound to die. Then, she ends the call. After that, the police force of the company receives instruction from their superiors, to beat the protesters, so they mercilessly attack the defenseless protesters. Following that, while the owner is on the way to her home, she informs her son about a package, and instructs him what to do, precisely like Sonny's mother's instructions. The delivery man, who turned out to be the ghost's brother, leaves the package as instructed, and waits for the kid to take it before entering. Afterward, the kid pleads with the ghost's brother not to kill him. The man does not want to kill the kid, but he wants to avenge his sister's death. The man looks at the kid crying and pleading before him, while his sister's ghost stands at the kid's back. Then the scene gets back to the victim and the kidnapper. She attempts to convince the kidnapper to free her, but the kidnapper gives her a box full of human teeth. The victim looks at the box, and her face shows disgust, while the kidnapper happily looks at her reaction. Despite that, the victim calms herself, and tells the kidnapper another scary story, entitled Endless Flight. The tale starts with a stewardess getting into a taxi to get home, but she ends up frantically running in a forest. As she desperately runs, she suddenly trips. She quickly recovers and sees a nearby house, so she attempts to run towards it, but a man suddenly grabs her. The scene then changes with another stewardess, nicknamed Ms. Uniform, in an airport. Ms. Uniform watches the news about a bloody murderer who has killed more than 10 women, while he is disguised as a taxi driver. The police have arrested the murderer, and they are escorting him to Seoul immediately. 
After watching the news, Ms. Uniform gets into the airplane with two pilots and another stewardess. Ms. Uniform shares her concerns about being in an aircraft with a murderer, who has escaped twice. So the colleagues assure her that everything will be fine, because there are two police officers on the flight, and the murderer is cuffed. The colleagues come up with a two-knock code they will use if something dangerous happens during the flight. Afterward, the police officers come in escorting the murderer. Suddenly, the murderer sees a ghost of a stewardess he killed, but then it quickly vanishes. Following that, while the two officers sit around the murderer, the murderer sees a sharp object on the floor, so he immediately steps on it to hide it. Moments later, one officer drops on the floor with a stab on his neck, while the murderer chokes the other officer with his cuffs. The officer attempts to free himself, but the serial killer is stronger than him. After releasing himself off the cuffs, the murderer goes to the other stewardess and forcefully shoves a magazine inside her mouth. Meanwhile, Ms. Uniform returns from the cockpit and sees the blood stain on the floor. She quickly opens the curtains, only to see the lifeless body of an officer and the murderer's bloody face. The murderer immediately runs towards her and uses Ms. Uniform to knock on the cockpit's door, but Ms. Uniform uses the two-knock code, which means danger. As the pilots did not open the door, the murderer tosses Ms. Uniform aside, causing her to lose consciousness. The following moment, a murderer waits for a pilot to look into the peephole. When the pilot finally peeps, he quickly stabs the pilot's eye. The pilot screams in pain, so the other pilot immediately puts the aircraft on autopilot to help his colleague. However, the murderer forcefully attempts to come in, so the pilot struggles to hold the door. Meanwhile, Ms. Uniform finally wakes up and stabs the murderer in the leg. The murderer looks at Ms. Uniform, so she immediately runs away. The murderer focuses on opening the door until he finally succeeds. Following that, Ms. Uniform silently cries as she hides away from the serial killer. She sees one of the police officers still alive, and the police officer informs her that there is a gun in the pocket of the other police officer. While the murderer walks on the aisle, Ms. Uniform cautiously leaves her hiding place and crawls under the seats. However, the murderer is behind her when she gets out of the seats. The murderer chokes her, and the aircraft experiences turbulence. Suddenly, the murderer sees the stewardess ghost looking at him, which causes him accidentally free Ms. Uniform. The murderer aches his wound, while Ms. Uniform looks for the gun. She realizes that she is too late, when she sees the murderer taunt her with the gun. Then the murderer shoots the remaining officer, so Ms. Uniform bravely faces the murderer. She turns off the light, and then hits the murderer with a cart. However, the murderer immediately recovers, but the stewardess ghost suddenly screams right on his face. Meanwhile, Ms. Uniform is behind him with the gun, and when the murderer turns around, Ms. Uniform immediately shoots him. Moments after Ms. Uniform and the injured pilot control the aircraft, but suddenly, the murderer shoots the pilot. Ms. Uniform screams in horror, while the serial killer smiles at her. The scene then changes back to the victim and the kidnapper. She informs the kidnapper that she is hungry, so the kidnapper prepares a raw liver for her. Suddenly, her phone rings, so the kidnapper confidently gives it to her to talk to her mother. Instead of informing her mother about her situation, the victim lies that she is with a friend doing homework. Then, the victim shares her third scary story about a man who likes younger girls, entitled Secret Recipe. It starts with a frantic woman wearing a fancy white dress. She is desperately trying to find a door, and when she finally does, a man slashes her throat. The woman attempts to escape, but the killer just drags her weak body, as she is losing blood. The scene then changes to a woman nicknamed Beauty, instructing her cosmetic surgeon to hurry up. Following that, Beauty's older stepsister named Pretty, prepares herself to meet her future husband, who is rich in cash and hormones, nicknamed Handsome. Pretty expresses her dislike about Beauty to their mother, but the mother reminds Pretty that they are still sisters. Afterward, Pretty and the mother warmly welcome Handsome into their house. The mother calls Beauty, and Beauty joins them wearing the same dress as Pretty. Suddenly, Beauty flirts with Handsome's hormones underneath the table, by caressing his smelly thighs, while Handsome tries his best to keep his hot dog calm, hoping his dog could survive the flirting. After dinner, while Handsome and Pretty get intimate, Pretty suddenly notices Beauty peeping their hormones from a hole. So Pretty takes an excuse to leave the room. Later, she angrily threatens Beauty not to creep again. The next day, Handsome's housemaid goes to Pretty's house and gives her a beautiful wedding dress. The housemaid almost gives the wedding ring, but then she sees Beauty creeping out, so she just leaves. Later that night, Pretty's wedding dress suddenly turns into a haunted crimson red, and blood drops from it, which causes a blood flood in the room. Pretty suddenly wakes up and realizes that it's just a dream, but sees that her wedding dress is gone. Meanwhile, Beauty wears Pretty's wedding dress with the mother's help. The mother assures Beauty that she is better than Pretty, 
Pretty sees them and attempts to take her dress back, but the mother informs Pretty that she cannot go to the wedding, as she has no feet. Pretty looks down and screams in horror, as her feet are cut off, while Beauty and the mother laugh out loud. Again, Pretty wakes up and realizes that it was all a bad dream. She stands up and attempts to open the window, but it is locked. She then sees her wedding dress gone, so she tries to open the door, but it is locked and blocked by woods outside. Suddenly, Pretty experiences heavy breathing and blurriness of vision, until she faints. Meanwhile, the mother proudly presents Beauty to Handsome, as a substitute for Pretty, and the mother reasons that Pretty got into an accident. The mother says that Beauty is younger, healthier, and hormone tastes better than Pretty. On the other hand, Pretty wakes up inside a strange room, so she goes out, and sees Handsome's housemaid cutting deer meat to make pickles. The housemaid informs Pretty that she saw her unconscious, when she returned to give her the wedding ring. Then the housemaid presents the beautiful ring to Pretty, but the maid quickly tosses it into a bucket full of animal meat, because Handsome has already married Beauty. However, Pretty gets the ring from the bucket, and puts it on her finger. Then, she enters his house, and finds a secret passageway on the wall. On the other hand, Beauty happily wanders Handsome's own surgical room to keep his young face. Then, she sees a bunch of unusual tools for surgery, so she asks Handsome about it. But he just kisses her neck, while his hand caresses her sexy body. Beauty savors the pleasure, when Handsome suddenly injects a drug on her neck, causing her to lose consciousness. Sometime later, Beauty wakes up, with her body strapped to a surgical bed. Handsome sees her awake, immediately cuts her body open, and tastes her blood. Beauty gasps as Handsome enjoy her trembling body, and the gushing of her blood. After slashing Beauty's body, Handsome decides to kill her, by dropping a big torturing tool onto her body. After that, Handsome prepares Beauty's body as his food. Pretty sees the stomach turning scene, which causes her to gasp in fear. Handsome hears the noise, but when he looks back, Pretty is already gone. So he leaves Beauty's body, and attempts to find Pretty, who is hiding in a room full of wedding dresses. Pretty shakes in fear, as she looks at the bloody dresses before her. Handsome comes into the room, almost catching Pretty, but luckily the housemaid calls Handsome upstairs. After Handsome leaves the room, Pretty sees the wedding dress that she was supposed to wear, and she realizes that she could have been dead if she married Handsome. Suddenly, Pretty wakes up, and sees the ring on her finger, which means everything is real. The mother informs Pretty that Handsome chose Beauty as her wife. Afterward, the mother opens a gift from Handsome, a jar full of fresh and delicious pickled meat. Pretty looks at the mother, disgusted as she eats the meat, so she informs the mother that she is eating Beauty. Pretty then drops the jar, which causes the meat to scatter on the floor. They see an eyeball, and the mother screams in horror, as she realizes that she ate Beauty's meat. Meanwhile, Handsome enjoys eating Beauty's meat with a glass of red wine. The scene then gets back with the victim and the kidnapper. She attempts to eat the raw liver, but ends up vomiting it. Suddenly sees a wound on the victim's ear, so he grabs and pinches it, which causes her to scream in pain. Then, the victim sees bite marks on the kidnapper's arm, which leads to her last scary story, entitled Ambulance on the Death Zone. It starts in an ambulance with a doctor, a nurse, and a mother with her unconscious child. The ambulance drives away from a horde of zombies, while the doctor and the nurse aid the child. After getting the child's pulse back, the doctor sees a scar on the child's wrist. The doctor believes that it is a bite mark from a zombie, but the mother tells them it is not. However, the doctor is skeptical about the scar, so he tests the child's blood, and the results are negative. The doctor and the nurse argue, because the doctor wants to throw the child off the ambulance. But the rest want to help the child, and suggest getting the child vaccinated. So the doctor calls the hospital, and informs them about their situation, but according to the doctor, the hospital does not have any vaccine anymore, and they refuse to take suspicious survivors. However, the mother and the nurse refuse to believe the doctor, so they attempt to fight him. But he is much stronger than them, and he has a gun. The doctor instructs the driver to stop the ambulance, and he throws off the child. All of them are outside, and the doctor attempts to shoot the child, but the mother fights the doctor. Then, the nurse shoots the doctor, which however, tracks a horde of zombies. They immediately get back in the ambulance, but the doctor and the driver get bitten by the zombies. Because of that, the mother expelled the doctor from the ambulance, and she is unaware that the driver has been infected, and they let him in. Afterward, the nurse starts to believe that the child is infected, so she secretly tests the child's blood. However, the nurse fails to see the result because of the tunnel's light, so she instructs the mother to get bandages for the child's wound. The mother lets go of the gun, and looks for the bandages, so the nurse slowly reaches for the gun. Meanwhile, the driver gradually becomes a zombie, causing the ambulance to shake. 
Then, the mother sees the nurse reaching for the gun, so the two fall into a girly struggle, while another horde of zombies attacks the vehicle. Then, the mother accidentally shoots the driver, so she leaves the nurse and drives the ambulance. Right then the driver fully turns into a zombie, and bites the mother. The mother immediately kills the driver, while the nurse attempts to throw the child off the ambulance, but the mother catches her child with a strap, and shoots the nurse, causing the nurse to fall off the ambulance. The following day, the mother embraces her child, who miraculously wakes up uninfected, but because she was bitten, the mother turns into a zombie in front of her child. The scene then changes back to the kidnapper, falling asleep on the victim's shoulder. She slowly puts the kidnapper on the bed, and then frees herself. Afterward, she attempts to leave. However, the kidnapper suddenly wakes up. He puts a knife on her neck. The kidnapper finally speaks, and asks the victim if she is ready to hear his scary stories, shown in Daniel CC Movie Channel. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.